It's time to start your life the way it is meant to be. There's only one time when it will be too late, and you don't want to wait for that. This is Now or Never. The choice is yours. Your host is Karen Wright. Today, you're about to meet some amazing people. The stories are not always happy ones, but they define a healing process. Listen with an open mind and an open heart. Now, here is Karen Wright. Welcome, listeners. We have a treat for you today. Our title for this today's show is called Take Action and Live Decided. I love that. Live Decided. It's time to reclaim your identity and grow into confidence as a decision maker. You have within you all the courage you need if you let go of the past and reclaim your mad your majesty. Today, I have my guest, Sonia Montel, about making choices for your life and your tribe. So, Sonia, how are you doing today? I am doing so fantastic and so happy to be here, Karen. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here with us. <laughs> this will be amazing. We were talking earlier today, sure. this morning, and I was like going, oh my gosh, this is just so much fun having Sonia with us and her expertise. Listeners, you're, you're going to want to like listen to this whole thing, especially if you have high schoolers mm-hmm. or even junior high, high schoolers, because Sonia is an expert on helping you um, move into transitioning from the high school into the college stage. So I'm so excited. But first off, listeners, I invite you to ground with Sonia and I. So if we can close our eyes and plant both feet on the floor, take a deep breath in and breathe out. Another deep breath in, allowing the breath to penetrate throughout the entire body into every cell, all the way down from your head to the soles of your feet. And exhale. Now bring your arms around your shoulders, taking a deep breath in and repeating three times. I am worthy of my love. I am worthy worthy of my love. love. I am am worthy worthy of of my my love. love. I am worthy of of my my love. love. Take another deep breath in. Give yourself a squeeze. And now tapping three times on your chest, repeating the words, accept, 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 accept. Take another deep breath in and release. Listeners, I invite you to lean in with your heart today. Open your mind, open your ears and really listening to the story, to the advice, to the knowledge that my guest has for you today. One more deep breath in and release. As we move forward, I always have my affirmation that we do each week, and I never look at the affirmation until I show it to my guests. And I invite Sonia, as I read the affirmation out loud, um, to share with the guests what comes into your thought, what was the first thing your heart thought of. I mean, when I say thought, I'm always talking about the heart, because <laughs> it's like, to me, we listen with our heart. And a lot of times we listen, we think with our heart. And to me, that's important too. To me, there's a balance between the knowledge of the head and the heart. So the affirmation today is, I am compassion. I am compassion. What was the first thing that came to your mind? It's powerful because I just read a book, Cassandra Speaks by Elizabeth Lesser. And it was about this notion of power and what, how society defines power. 
um, where it's very maleness, a lot of like explosives and soldiers and things like that. But I always knew that my compassion was my power all along, all along since I was a child. And I do truly believe that I am compassion and that is my power. I, I enjoyed, I love those words to me. It's just compassion to me is a very powerful thing. And um, a lot of times in the environment, maybe that we're raised in or things like that, we're taught not to be. Because to me, compassion and emotions can go hand in hand. Sure. If someone's compassionate, then maybe they're too emotional. And like you said, that man society sometimes is like, what? Don't be compassionate. Grow up, you know, be strong, be rugged, do all this stuff. Although and I've met men in the army and the military and powerful sure. men who are compassionate. Right. And it just adds to it. Well, and I remember though, growing up and knowing so clearly, like, this is, this is me, this is how I can influence or help. And I would get messaging like, that's so sweet and kind, Sonia. And what else? It was almost like, oh, that's nice. And then do you think what else is there? As if there was something else that I had to be, to, to receive in order to feel that power. But you're right. I mean, this book, by the way, is not about male versus femaleness. It was about this unison of both all types of power unifying and finding the strength um, in terms of relationships. So, well, I appreciate you sharing listeners, make sure you write that down in your sticky note or on your mirror where I write mine down. I am compassion and challenge yourself this week to be compassion. And remember our theme for August is about the lion, the lioness being the king or queen of the jungle. Focus on creating our life like a lioness. The lion is a symbol for royalty, mastery, and power. It is a strong female archetype. Lion, lioness do the hunting, care for the young, and survive because of their cooperation. They create a carefree existence to their playful cubs. Lions are one of the few cats that live in a community. The pride lives in the moment without care meaning they live in the now. The male lions are charged to be protective, passionate, and possessive. So even the lions have passion, compassion. Isn't that amazing how that mm -hmm. goes hand in hand with the lion today, the passion of the male, and we just talked about it. <laughs> I love sure. this. <laughs> They're at the alignment. <laughs> totally in alignment, you guys. Lions can be invoked in times of threat and are a great force against negative energies. And so listeners, as you kind of absorb that right now, just take a moment. Think about the lion, the lioness, and how those tribes, they run together. They're a pack. They help each other. But the lion being the king of the jungle is also the protector. He's passionate and possessive of his tribe, his family. And to me, that's just a great food for thought for this beautiful month of August. Mm -hmm. Listeners, I want to introduce to you all Sonia. I'm going to read a little bit about her bio. Sonia has served more than 21 years in the college admission profession. She has extensive experience in the areas of freshman transfer and international admission. She funded, um, she started College Confidence in 2002 with the purpose of protecting the worth and authenticity of teens so they feel ready to take on the world. In 2020, Sonia co-founded The Decided Heart. This helps individuals, groups, and organizations convert experiences into intentional opportunities to strengthen identity, trust, and belonging. Yay, Sonia! <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's like powerful to me. I just am, I, okay, I am so intrigued. So you've been in the college admissions for 21 years. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how did that even come about? By accident. <laughs> Those kind of accidents. Oh, you know, it's like lives are all about twists and turns. And um, 
you know, you, you, I don't think there's a lot of young people that say, when I grow up, I'm going to be a college counselor. I don't think there's a lot because of the messaging that we receive, we receive from the adults. So it was just through happenstance. I just kind of followed what felt right in my learning. I got denied from a PhD program for communications. Um, and then I, that was a, a what Hillary Bilbrey, she's a co-founder of the Decided Heart Effect and myself, we talk, we talk about our moments, our decided heart moments. And that was a moment when it wasn't going as planned. And then I said, well, what else is there for me? And then that was it. I shifted to higher education, got my master's in education. And that set the path of, of where I have been in education, but also this, this transformation of the decided heart effect, which, ha which is sequential. There is a reason why I want to look at more of our identity, trust, and belonging as people, as grown-ups, influencing the children of the world. So we ultimately protect um, teen worth. That is a very powerful statement right there, protecting teen worth. There's so much out there right now with um, child trafficking and, it's, and the teens and how that leads into that. And that we're protecting the teen, to me, just gives me goose, goose flesh. People yeah. gives me goose flesh because sure. that is that is just um, something that more and more people are realizing, you know, and they're taking taking not control but trying to help more. And with your decided heart, um, I mean, you kind of just explained a little bit, like you have that pivot point in your life where, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And it's it's like, okay, well, what can I do? What's important mm -hmm. to me? So. There has been, I love this, you have a male lion in your life that influenced you. Um, who was this and how did he influence you? Oh, wow. Yes. I didn't know that my father was going to be this famous because I talk about him all <laughs> the time. You know, it's like kind of when we, hopefully when we grow wiser, as we go older, we kind of celebrate the people who've, who've influenced us. And yes, my lioness of, of mom has been influential, but man, my father he was a single parent. So he, he's influenced me in multiple roles. So as a single parent in the eighties, I have a twin sister. That was our mini pride. And he, he had, he, there was a protection, of course, there was absolute compassion and unknowing. And he had to trust the us in building this family. So in doing that and kind of figuring out, well, how do I navigate raising twin daughters? working full time and all of those things, um, he became my, our soccer coach. So he was our role, our lion within the pride, within our world of soccer, being the best coach I've ever had in my soccer career. And I have been in soccer for a very long time. Um, and now like this life mentor, as I'm an adult in my forties, mm -hmm. he still remains, you know, the lion in my life. And that's really important. Um, and I love the fact that he was your soccer coach, because I think a lot of times um, he looked at it like, how can I be there for my kids, even though he's working full time? And I love you said the word trust. Oh, man. Yep. Because for a parent raising two, two girls, little twin girls, you know, he's by himself and he's trusting that he will know what's going to be best. I'm getting emotional. I will. Don't. Yeah. Don't. don't <laughs> Cause I'm going to, I actually had this image. Uh, my sister and I were seven and, you know, he had to leave us alone a lot. Um, and he was so intentional about communicating the foundation of what makes us work. He would have these sayings of, we must trust each other. I trust you. I trust that 10 minutes after eight, I'm going to call you. You're going to answer on the second ring. And he put electrical tape on the clock because we would have to look and say, what is 10 after eight? Right. On the second ring, you're going to pick up. I trust that you're going to follow these, these boundaries because I could trust you take care of yourself just as much as you know that these the systems that I've created is for the safety of the pride. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just so intentional that he built that he fortified that belief within our, within our family. So have you carried that on? Like you're, are you married? Yes. Okay. And do you have children? Yeah, I have two daughters. Okay. So with his, his influence as a parent, how did you carry that forward with your children and your family? 
you know, I, it seeps in, you know, there's some things where I'm like, oh, I won't do that when I raise my, my children, but yeah. 90% of things that he's done, it, the role modeling it has become such a habit in my thinking that of course I'm going to share those philosophies and values. And I'm very intentional. And I use those words um, to make sure that they understand what does trust mean? Not just I hear the words, but I know what it means to my mother and my father, to myself as an individual and the relationships that's forming within the circle. And then what happens after that with that role model, they exercise that when they expand their community to their friends. And I love the word that you use com um, communication, because with parents, I think sometimes um, <clears throat> communication is two part is words, like you said, and then it's action. For sure. And then there's actually three words, action, and then listening, because I'm sure there's times where he tried things and it didn't work and he might have saw and heard, oh, that's not going to work. I mean, as a parent, sometimes. I know I've tried different things with my kids and I'm like going, okay, this was not, <laughs> this is not working. And they're letting me know, mom, this is not working. But instead of being like, oh, this is going to work. It's kind of like you step back for a moment and you listen to what your kids are saying. Because to me, it's a two-way, two-way street here. Yep. Right. And I think sometimes as parents, we get in that role of controlling, making sure everything's going as planned. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got, we got the upper hand, the kids don't, right? Sure. Yep. In a lot of aspects, yes, there's that respect and all of that. But I also think sometimes being able for a child to use their voice, use their emotions and be able to speak how they're feeling and being allowed to is very important. How that, do you think about that? Well, that was the one piece that was missing is um, what Hillary has taught me um, was assertiveness. And we were, we wanted to, we were obedient. We were valued for being obedient and good, but the talk like asserting our values and a communication back was something that was slightly missing in my upbringing. So we made sure my husband and I to bring that forth with our, with our two daughters. Speak your mind. Tell us what's not working. Give us feedback. Right. Right. See, I, and to me, that's important because I look at my youngest daughter. I mean, she, she made me a grandma. So excited. So listening, like watching her and her husband parent and with this, he's only a year old. Right. But even now, like when he falls down, she'll say, oh, I bet that hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to cry. And I'm looking at her going, oh my gosh, in my day, I'd like swoop him up and go, you're okay, you're okay, you know, right. let me, let me help you. But she's allowing him the opportunity to hear, oh, you fell down. I bet that hurts. And letting him that connection and the value. So my kids are, are improving their parenting mm -hmm. from what we did as a parent. And I love that you, you noticed that and that you shared that with us with, you know, it's yeah, generation. I can't wait. I mean, I know I would love to talk. We call that deta um, detached compassion. And it's the most powerful tool that I've learned later in my parenting life. Um, and that's a thing. You, you, you take what you've learned and you move on and you develop as a parent. And that's what the beautiful thing is with, with them learning and growing and forgiving, you know? Right. I think that's great. Um, detached compassion. I just wrote that down because I want to go back to that. And um, we come back. We are going into our break. So listeners, we've had a couple minutes here introducing our theme for August, our um, affirmation card, I am compassion and introducing Sonia. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. Okay, perfect. Good job. All clear. Back in a couple minutes. Okay, thank you. Detached compassion. I can't wait. I wrote that down because I'm like going, I want to know more about that. Oh, I, I can't wait to share that with you. It's part of the decided heart effect work and it's um, based on the virtues project. And it is exactly what you've described, you know, in terms of don't take the experience away from your, your children or, you know, who, who you're walking alongside with. Mm -hmm. You have compassion, but you're detached. So you respect their own experience. So when they fall off the bike, and they're hurt, you don't swoop, you know, you try not to swoop them up and say, no. but that's our protective nature. It is. Yeah. Right. 
Um, so yeah, I would, would, we could explore that a bit more. I think that's one of the most powerful tools I've learned as parenting and as an educator. Yeah, I think so. I think that will be, well, it's funny, you know, it's crazy how the affirmation cards come back. I am compassion. Yes. And we talk about, you know, the, the lion being passion and detached compassion. I'm like, oh my goodness, I love the universe <laughs> and how it works. Yes. <laughs> That is so funny. Yeah. I mean, so the compassion is going to be the word of the day, right? I am compassion. Here we go. <laughs> Which is such a good thing. Oh my goodness. It was so much fun. I love that. Your dad sounds wonderful and your mom. So are you close to your twin sister? Very much. Very much. Yeah. She's my soulmate. My husband knows that when I married him, I met my husband in high school. So Basically, it was my boundaries like this is going to work only if you know that you're half of my soulmate. My sister is my other half. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And he's like, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, I think he really respected that love. It was, right. I think, the surety of it. I was just so sure. And he's like, I want that. I, I want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I can't put words into his mouth. I'm, I'm thinking that's what he wanted. <laughs> so listeners, we need to call in call in what's your what's your husband's name <laughs> like hey Richard Richard call on in what do you think Richard <laughs> he'll be like what all right coming back here in about 12 seconds okay thank you voiceamericaempowerment.com You are listening to Now or Never, The Choice is Yours. To connect with the program today, please call us at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is karen at shinenowornever.com. Let's get back to this week's show. Here again is Karen Wright. Listeners, welcome back. I hope you took a moment um, during the break just to reflect about what Sonia was talking about right before we went to break. We were talking about children and how we like swoop them up and try to protect them and how I've noticed my child who now is a parent with her little one-year-old son, how she is parenting a little bit differently. And Sonia said, we call that detached compassion. And as you know, our affirmation word is on compassion. And as we read about the line, he's very passionate. And so we are moving forward with the word, what does detached compassion mean? Sonia, uh, what do you yeah, share with you, us? <laughs> it's like you triggered, you triggered that because the, the, the scene, I think that many parents or caregivers can identify with as we're protectors of our families is when we see our children hurt. And, you know, the basic one is we teach them how to, you know, ride a bike and they fall and they cry. Our initial intuition is oh my gosh I shall fix this for you I'm running I'm sprinting to the child and I'm swooping and saying to the child you're okay but that what happens with that that's not detached compassion you have you've actually robbed that child of their own experience and you're telling that child a predict a prescription you should feel these things when these things happen to you and depend on another person to help you find repair or resolve mm -hmm. Detached compassion is something I had to work on. It's, I am walking along, and I'm just, please, I have to give credit to Hillary Bilbrey and the Virtues Project. And this is what the Decided Heart Effect is about. It's how do I walk alongside a person I care about and have them experience their experience while I, I become their mentor or their guide. So when your, your um, daughter-in-law said, you know, goes to the, of course, goes to the child and then leans and separates, detaches and say, I saw that fall. I see that you're hurt. The child now has this response to say, huh, is it hurt? Maybe I'm afraid I can have this experience on my own and celebrate that I have ability and capability to find resolve. Oh, you know what, mom, I'm actually fine. That was scary, but I'm fine. Or yeah, I'm hurting. Look, at, I need a Band-Aid. And, and we just talked about that practice of, of assertiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, I mean, I think we, we, that is the work to do. I think uh, for me, I'll speak for myself, but when we can be a, de a detached, compassionate person in others' lives, 
everyone seems to evolve and grow. That's very powerful because we've been taught just through generations of swooping people up, taking care of them and, you know, hovering. I've been Mm. called a hovering helicopter mom, (laughs) which I was, I take full responsibility for it because I was, and I own it, but I recognize it. And so as the kids get older and they grow and, you know, now watching them as adult children, kind of sitting back and allowing them to explore life and walking their journey, you know, on their own. Um, so there's another question you had in here that I wanted, I think we'll go right here. So lions rely on cooperation to ensure they, they and their cubs survive, right? So mm-hmm. kind of like what we're talking about right now. How does this relate to families and educators and youth leaders? Um, well, it's, it's everything, honestly. I mean, as humans, that sense of belonging and cooperation and collaboration means everything um, because doing the work. So when we would talk about identity, like, well, who am I and well, as a parent? Who am I as a parent? And how, how can I improve the relationship? Well, if we stay within our own heads and hearts, we only know what we know. So to evolve beyond that and to learn, it takes other people. It takes knowledge elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And that is where we lean towards other lionesses and lions right. and say, how are, how are we together going to ensure that this cub feels fully worthy of him or herself? And so as edu- this is anybody who has... Um, a responsibility of caretaking. Mm -hmm. So that's why educators, college counselors, parents, youth leaders, we should all always have that, we should be accountable, honestly, I'll be a little strong on that. We're accountable to having those conversations of finding out, well, we call it the village, right? That's kind of like where the, some people use tribe, some people use village. village, Yeah. Right. And so when, when the child can see, wait, everyone around me is thinking and is protecting my worth. We're creating that environment for the teen or the child because as early as possible is the most important. By the time they become teens, they say, I am fully worthy, period. Mm -hmm. So as as you're working with these high schoolers, you know, they're graduating, they're 17, 18, they're they're taking on the world, they're invincible, right? You know, that's like how they feel. I watch my kids going through it. It's like, okay, we got this. But then on the other side, they're like, we're scared to death. Oh, for sure. We don't know what we're doing. This is all new. Um, how can you help? What, what word of advice would you give to parents with kids coming into the, you know, from trans, from high school into college? Because there's a lot of, and I talked to you this earlier before the show, there's a lot of emotion for a parent watching their little baby now graduate from high school and moving on to college. Yes. And there's so much emotion for that, for that child, that student now from high school into college and finding that balance to both be able to express, but not be able to hold back, you know, not making one feel guilty, like the student feel guilty because all of a sudden he's graduating and now the the parents yeah. like I don't want you to go. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a drama, <laughs> drama scene, right? Yeah, and well, that was me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, and I've I've been through it a lot over and over where, with families. It's such a sacred time for me to be part of that that milestone in a family um, family time. I also have a twenty year. Uh, she'll be twenty one this year. So I went through it as a mother as well. I couldn't help but feel those emotions, like the nervousness, and anxiousness, that. The, the earlier that we can practice, if we can practice detached compassion, which include, there's a many, many skills that go into that, but that open communication. So with, I'm thinking about my teen daughter, she's a sophomore mm-hmm. and allowing the open-mindedness to come in. Cause I really think that sometimes parents accidentally prescribe their future, the child's future, like, you know what, to be successful and happy, you better go to college, you better go to law, engineering, business, become a doctor, those four things, right? Mm -hmm. 
and the intention with parents is I want to keep things simple for my teen. I know that they want to be independent, but they're also lost and scared. So if I prescribe this, it will be easy for them to deal with their emotions. Or perhaps I, as a parent, I'm taking all of my history and fear when I was a teen into this conversation because things didn't happen for me or that I didn't want to happen for my teen. So I'm going to repeat things, mm -hmm. right, from my own childhood as a parent. So that's why we, there's some work of clarity to do in, in our own identity. So here are the tips. If we could be open-minded with our teens, don't show them the four things of, that they should do as a career. Don't show them the one path that college is the, the answer to happiness and success. Teens have six options. The teen brain, they want to know what all their options are. And then if, because if, I know parents, if you have teens, if you, if you push them to a corner, they're either going to completely check out or fight. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but that's you, true for any human. Yeah, For any human, right. Mm -hmm. But that teen brain, like, I mean, they're, it's, they're like it's erratic, like it's just quick. Mm -hmm. And when you can say, here are all of your options after high school, let me walk alongside you and help you decide what are the benefits and challenges of each option. You're, you're teaching them to critically think. You're, you're having them say, you have the ability to decide, right? And that clarity creates this open communication. So hmm. open-mindedness, be more still. <laughs> Please be more still. Quiet and silence for the teen to mill over their emotions is so important. And Karen, I don't know about you, you know, like usually, and I'll, I'm going to pick on the females, maybe, maybe males too, but the more we talk, the thing we think the more we talk, the more we're solving. Mm, no, it's <laughs> not good. Negative. Nah, uh, <laughs> reject. <laughs> right. And then a lot of teams will be like, oh, can we talk about it later? Like just so much noise going on. Can we talk about it later? And then they storm off. And then some, some parents will like follow them down the hall into the room to continue talking. Mm hmm so being more still, so they allow some time to think, being present and available for knowing like I have my parent to lean against if when I need that guidance. Um, slow down the pace, please. In the name of achievement, um, we have to redefine what achievement is um, because our teens, and I'll pick on the, the high achieving team, they're, they're sprinting with no, they don't know what the end looks like, but they're sprinting towards something. Mm -hmm. They're always in a rush. They're always busy, hence they're always stressed, which leads to anxiousness, and we're seeing mental health issues. So let's just slow it down a bit. Be I love still, that. lean in. So repeat again the six, the six like little steps you just said. Open-minded, be still, be present, and slow down. Yes, and, and if I can add just, let's redefine achievement. Okay, redefine achievement. It's, it's, um, so I've, my kids, they, you know, went to schooling after, um, and my first one, you know, you're always hardest on your first child. Yeah. And I'm, she was like overachiever. She had 21 credits before she graduated from high school and she got up and she studied, she did, like, we're like, do this, do this. Like, ah. And, um, you know, she went through school, graduated, got her bachelor's and, when she got done, she's kind of like, now to go on in the profession that she wanted to do, she would have to go get her master's in it, you know, and she was just burned out. Mm -hmm. And so she found another career that she went into in the some sales and with um, apps and computers or whatever. I'm going to slaughter whatever she does. So I'm not going to say what it <laughs> is, but she's amazing at what she's doing. She's 29. She's successful. She loves what she does. She learned how to work and study to get what she wanted. And she has that driving force, that driving internal force within her. And, you know, proud mama over here, you know, and then my son, he goes and goes to college and gets, um, graduates in entrepreneurship and business. And I love that because, you know, both of them have chosen careers of what they wanted to do. And my son, he's, um, is always looking at mom you know, what should I do for work? Because it's the next stage in life. Now you've graduated and then what? There's right. no handbook. Right. And what I pointed out to him. So I want to say I have learned from my first child to my second. <laughs> okay. I am improving here. 
I said to him, what makes you happy? What do you enjoy? Whatever that is, find out what that is and then turn that somehow into a business. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I'm kind of entrepreneurship too. Um, And I realized that if you're loving what you're doing, it's never work or a job. Well, it's part of your life. For sure. And that's what we call in the education world, like growth mindset. An achievement is chasing curiosity. What are you curious about? When you're curious, you're willing to overcome challenges. And the reward of that is the outcome. Did you seek? Did you gain knowledge? Do you have a better question now when you're chasing that curiosity? Joy should be important. You know, there shouldn't be language like, oh, well, work is work and you might not enjoy it. And then you could live life happily. Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, in order for us to thrive, it's both. And growth mindset is I don't care about the rewards, the GPA test scores or the trophies on my shelf. I care about the overcoming this challenge because I'm curious about what happens beyond that. So as, as parents, if we can encourage effort rather than that thing at the end, good job, honey, you got 4.0. No, wow, that 4.0 meant the discipline it took, the grit Mm -hmm. it took, the persistence. How did you feel about that? If we can practice those conversations as early as we can in our children, then they will get to that teen college years and say, continue to ask themselves, what am I curious about? Mm -hmm. And then that, that beautiful discoveries like you, like you've had, you've witnessed with your, both of your children, you know, that's something to celebrate as an achievement for parents. Right. No, it really is. And then my youngest, you know, she went to estheticians as a master esthetician does facials and she loves that, you know? And so, and I did hair growing up, you know, I went and did hair. And so I just love that kind of stuff. And, and it's at the end of the day, it's, you know, money's important. I love money, right? (laughs) Yes. But money's, there's so much out there for everybody in my, in my opinion, but at the end of the day, you can't take that money with you when you pass. And so if you're not enjoying what you're doing, making that money, then really is that energy good coming mm-hmm. from that money? You see what I mean? Oh, or is it sure. like, oh, I'm working hard and I get payday. Okay, now I got to pay my checks. And now there's no more money. Now I got to work again. It's like this vicious cycle we get into. Right. And I think a lot of it could be the mindset of you only work to pay your bills. Right. And so I work because I love it. Well, and then I went through a lot of coaching um, for myself because I was discovering that I had money blocks. I had a scarcity mindset and then in scarcity mindset, you're so worried about security, that security, you have to make sure the foundation's there so then you can enjoy life. But the, the transformation for me is this notion of abundance. When I feel abundance in the work that I'm doing and the more that I can serve because it feels, gives me so much joy and impact in the world that money will come in because mm-hmm. I fully believe in it. And so the, the purpose or intent of our, of our profession, and I'll just say my profession, I no longer am looking at my checkbook and say, oh my gosh, am I doing enough? Can I feed it's, And, and it, there is that alignment. It's the work that I'm doing will, will create that security for me. And that was, a, that was another piece of work that I had to do in terms of my own mindset. Mm-hmm. But that's the power of the mind. Yeah. Once yep. you acknowledge and accept it, then you have the opportunity to create your mindset or, or your new thought process. And to me, that's, um, that's what we're here in life, learning and growing and creating as we go. Yeah. Listeners, we've been with Sonia. We're getting ready to go into a break. But think for just a moment. What's your mindset? Whether it's going to college, you know, 18, 19-year-olds, you're getting ready for college. What's your mindset there? What do you really want to do? Parents, can you step back and just be still? Don't force your kids into something they don't want to. Listen. Just take the time and listen. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. All right. That segment, we're all clear. Back in about two. Okay. Thank you. Sonia, that was awesome. I know. Isn't that, I, don't you just love it? Like, we're going off tangent. This is not. <laughs> but it's so, yeah. You're. I mean, it, it's so important, too. I mean, yeah. you know, our, I guess our conversation's meant to land where it needs to land. Mm-hmm. And feel, I am feel I have a physical reaction of just like the like you know what passion does. You get the higher. I mean, just the excitement. Um, 
the conviction that I'm feeling. Um, so I just know that this is like the right conversation to have. That's, and that's what I love is that you just, yeah, you, my goal is like one listener out there is going to hear this and be like, ah, let me change my life. It was great. Yeah. I'd be a better mom. I'm not going to be like Karen. And then I'm, no, I'm just joking. I'm be like Karen. Oh my, well, and you know, I just, I love it. The, the, the vulnerability of, yeah, we mess up. And that's not part of, that's all part of, that, that's not even that's messing up. It. It's discovery. Mm-hmm. We're discovering. I call, <laughs> I call it adventures. I've been so many adventures on my kid. Exactly. <laughs> like a science they're like, projects. They're my science projects. Like, oh, that didn't work. Oh, sorry, Bella out there. Sorry. I love you. You know, <laughs> I know. Love all you guys. We're good here. <laughs> And when we go back into break, I want to make sure you have um, the opportunity to share your contact information. Okay. So people can get a hold of you. And then let's go just a little bit, because once we do that, I want them to know how they can get a hold of you, what your whole, the college confidence is about. Okay. Um, and then is that, do you want to talk more about that or go into decided heart? I am more in the decided heart. Okay. Then we'll that go into that. Okay. That would be fantastic. Okay. That'll be good. And then we'll just let it kind of flow where, where, where it goes. Okay. Yeah, no, who knows? <laughs> I know. It's like, I, I love the questions because I read your questions and then I just kind of go off and I, you know, and I reword or kind of think, okay, how can we <laughs> flow in with the questions with what we're talking about? Cause there's, to me, this stuff is really important. Lots of layers too, you know? So this could be like the chapter one <laughs> of the conversation. I know. Here's an overview. And then we're going to really dissect. I know you're going to have to come back. Okay. I will. (laughs) All right. We are just about to come back. Okay. Thank you. You are listening to now or never the choice is yours to connect with the program today. Please call us at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is karen at shinenowornever.com. Let's get back to this week's show. Here again is Karen Wright. Listeners, welcome back. We've been having the privilege of speaking with Sonia today and her, oh, her words of knowledge and wisdom on parenting and learning about detached compassion, learning about being open-minded and being still and being present for your children, particularly those, those kids getting ready to go from high school into college. And is it really college they want to go into? Maybe it's a trade school. Maybe it's a job they love. Finding that inner guidance and listening to what your child wants because they are individuals. And parents, remember, you raised your children to fly. And allowing them to fly I'm going to get kind of teary eyed here. Sometimes it's hard, but that's what we want. We don't want homing pigeons returning, 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 like flying, coming back. We want eagles. We want our babies to fly like eagles and soar Mm -hmm. and letting, allowing them to have times where they hurt, but instead of trying to fix it, allowing them to go through the emotions and opening up to us as a child and a parent, an adult and a parent saying, mom, dad, I'm feeling this, or this has happened. Do you have words of advice Mm -hmm. and be able to offer that? And so take time listeners, just see where you're at as parenting. There's no right or wrong. It's all, you know, I call it revolving. We're all moving forward with our adventures or discoveries as being a parent, as Sonia and I were talking about during break. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, As we move forward, I want my listeners to remember, I have my retreat coming up October 7th through the 10th in Park City, Utah. It's called Diamonds Ignite, Now or Never. And this retreat will help um, individuals, I'm honing around the women here, helping them taking time for themselves, realizing their expertise, realizing their goals and dreams, and helping them achieve it. So go to my website. Now, um, shinenowornever.com and click on the retreat site and lean into it with your heart and see what you want. If you have questions, feel free to call me, um, email me, and I'll be here for you. And Sonia, how can people get a hold of you? 
So for the DH effect, the decided heart effect, you can find our contact information at thedheffect.com. Um, if you are curious about college counseling and where to start, you can visit collegeconfidence.net. Um, and that's where, you know, the, there's such alignment with your show, Karen, um, because we are, it is the heart work, but the heart work isn't a substitute. It is the core. And what we love about, I, I also say we a lot because I don't, no, I, really, the, the because I'm a lioness, but yeah. well, and it's, and it's Hillary, but it's also you. It's the community that believes that the now and never is so important. We don't look back. It's now right? And we make that mm -hmm. decided heart moment. We decide on it. Um, so you can get more information on the, the dheffect.com if you want more information. I think that would be great. And um, during break, we were talking kind of like, okay, where, where should we go next, you know? And Sonia is so, she's an expert on helping parents and, and teens with the college confidence. So I invite you to go there because um, it's kind of unknown, you know, we, you talk to your school counselors and things like that. But if I, I kind of, I wish back in the day I knew Sonia. So I could be like, help me. What's our next step? What do we do? Reach out. There's always, she's there. She's got a great crew with her, helping her doing the things that she loves to do. But we're going to go a little bit um, deeper with a decided heart and what that pertains to. Um, teaching our kids to be innovators and creators mm -hmm. and I'm a firm believer on you can create, like we talked about right before we went to break, your mindset and how to change your mindset with you speaking. Um, I've all, you know, I'm home by myself a lot. So I talk to <laughs> myself a lot. And the only one listening to me is me. And those words that I'm talking to, to myself about are very important. Are they words of encouragement or are they words of like, Karen, dang it, you didn't do this today. You didn't do that. Like you should have gone grocery shopping. You should have done this and you haven't done it. And now what? Is that really important? And Sonia, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you when we were talking about abundance and money because, you know, money is energy. Money is abundance. And it's that total thought process that we're doing. Are there certain affirmations or rituals or things that you do um, that my listeners could like take note on and be like, oh my gosh, someone told me to do this and it's working and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I, it, it begins with our thoughts and we're in question where our thoughts are coming from. So there's a great coach, um, Darcy Loma, and she said, really take action on the initial thought you have when you react to something and, and stay there, be still and say, why, where did that thought come from? Mm -hmm. You know, if someone said, Oh, Sonia, you know, I need to look at this. You know, I'm questioning the, the essay topic. You, you helped my son, you know, decide on, am I saying, Oh my gosh, he he's doubting my work. He's questioning the topic. Am I saying that to myself or I'm saying, oh, he wants follow-up, he wants clarity. If we can control those initial thoughts, we can control the actions afterwards. And with a decided heart, there's, there's three pillars. There's the, the identity, the inner work. The inner work is our, our thoughts. Who, who am I? What do I stand for? How am I taking action on what I stand for? The second one is trust. Am I trustworthy? Means can others trust me? What am I doing? To, to earn trust of others. Am I trustful? Do I trust others? <laughs> so it's that mm -hmm. reciprocal relationship. Right. And those two things are so critically important because then you build the sense of belonging. Where is it that I belong? Who are my people? And not only that, how am I creating? Because to me, it's you can't just you know come to the party and say like, I'm here guys, look at me, I'm, I'm with my people. But are you also creating the sense of belonging? And it, so I know I just went a little off tangent because it's a scaffolding process. No, it's not off tangent. Yeah, You're on just, my show. There's nothing off. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> but it really, it begins with our own thoughts. It really is. It starts right there and questioning like, was that a good thought for me? Did that help me or did that harm me? Mm -hmm. If we can micromanage it just a bit and maybe rely on some of our deca detached, compassionate friends who can help us rumble with that, the growth begins. I think that's um, important. And there's, 
So this journey, the last seven years of affirmations and changing my mindset and manifesting and doing my vision boards is like the whole new world is opening up. You know, Little Mermaid, the whole new world. Like, <laughs> I love that song so much. <laughs> and it's so, but that's a powerful song. Um, and it's so true. It's like, I am the creator of my life. Someone said, um, what do you do every day? Like, would you change anything about your day? And I, I think about, I'm like, no, mm -hmm. because every day I'm doing what I want to do. And even though I'm working full time and doing things and running errands, those are my choices. We have the freedom to choose. And we have the freedom to think how we want to. And a lot of times when we're in those moments, like you said, you identify instead of, you know, there's a reaction and stop, mm. stop, think and listen. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't yep. that like a choo-choo song? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stop. Mm. Anyway, you stop and you dig deeper and go, why, why am I thinking this? What's my trigger? What's going on? And it's acknowledging it and then be able to say, okay, you accept it and then you can release it and then reprogram your mind. Is there one um, affirmation, Sonia, that you just love that you think often to yourself? Yeah, it, it, it goes for, for myself and, and everyone I work with. It's, I am worthy. Mm. Um, and if we, you know, all that work, if we, if we cannot say that for ourselves and believe it, I am worthy, then how do we expect our children to believe it? And don't we want our children to say that, that every day, I am worthy, I am enough, I am celebrating who I am today. Like, so worth is an important word for me. I am worthy. That's a powerful word. We're all worthy, no matter where we're at in life. And we're in different areas, we're in different growth patterns. We might be in the valleys or we might be on the mountaintops, depending on where we're at, but we're worthy of divinity. We're worthy of the best that there is and we get we get to create that and to me that's the beauty of it so word of advice to our parents Sonia can you besides being I am worthy because I love that one <laughs> write that one down also listeners I am worthy I am compassion um moving forward as a parent for you know my listeners as they're getting ready to send their college students off or you know their young moms or young dads and word of advice for these listeners perhaps it's the message of the child that i raised is capable my child has abilities right my um my child is resourceful like believe in what you've done as a lioness or a lion believe in that trust it because they have absorbed those children that we we've raised they have absorbed at least 50 percent of the lessons and when you can communicate, I fully believe in you, you have the ability, you have the, the capabilities, then you're celebrating the milestone rather than worrying about it or being afraid of it. And then watching your eagle soar. Oh, I love that imagery because we're saying you fly as high and as strong as you can, honey. And I'll be mm -hmm. watching you and I'll be celebrating for you. Heck yeah. Or be like, go, oh, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> don't forget where I live. <laughs> come back like, call me food. <laughs> it was so funny listeners last night my son got married and we we're doing our dance and I'm crying he's crying and he's like mom do you have any words of advice for me and I said listen to your heart mm. and I said remember you can always call me still because I'm still here you know and I'm not here and I said I'm not here to lecture I'm here to listen I go if you need to vent because we'll have venting sessions, you know, we're hiking together and I'll be like, okay, just listen, just need to get this off my chest. And so he just listens. And so I think that's very important. And that was part of your, your tools, your pillars and things today. Um, Sonia, you're very powerful. And this, I just invite my listeners as we come to a close today to go to Decided Heart. Look this up, read this to me, this whole program goes hand in hand with what you said, Sonia, about my program is listening with your heart, following your heart, being in the now, being in the present and being still. Yeah. Listeners, this has been a wonderful segment. I'm so excited that Sonia was here with us. And as we go through the week, remember 
the two affirmations. I am compassion and I am worthy. The breath is a gift of life. Choose now and live. Remember this world is not for sissies. We're here to experience our own journey, our own story, as we each walk our personal paths. Have an amazing day and thank you for choosing to be here now. Until next week, sending you all love and light. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. All right, so with that, we can show up here. Okay, thank you, Matt. Yep, thank you. Have a good one. Okay, you too. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Sonia. That was good. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much. And it's so organized too. I'm just so blown away. <laughs> that was really cool. That was a great experience. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and doing this and for leaning in with your heart and just feeling it. And you, you got it. I just felt good. like we were, we, we met each other and we were walking along side by side, holding hands for some reason. That's like my, <laughs> that's my I imagery. <laughs> Love it. And that's to me what life is about. You know, you're finding those people that you just connect with and yeah, just sharing what your beliefs are. Yeah. Just, you know, so and I'm excited about your retreat. I'm actually going to check it out and then all the best. I, I mean, it sounds beautiful. And you know what? Maybe you have people you can send it off to too. Yeah. I'm, I'm on that website right now. <laughs> Yay for you. I love you. Okay. Um, we will stay in contact. Okay. Let me know, maybe email me if there's any other um, times you want to come back, you know, in the next what, I know you're busy with registration. So maybe after the first of the year again or something. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Love or it. if you know of anyone who might want to be on my radio show, you know, I'm always looking for guests. So, okay. you know, it'd be Ooh. great. Okay. Sounds I'm good. I might bring the wheat in. <laughs> That's okay. I think that would be good. Okay. okay. Thank you, Karen. So Love much. you. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye.